In the first tutorial, you learned how to associate parameters to a multi-parameter and do some basic stuff with them. In this tutorial, we'll learn more advanced stuff the multi-parameters can do. We will focus on the behavior panel. Let's open mauto dynamic eq like last time and learn the frequency of the high pass filter to the multi-parameter one. It immediately brings the first problem to tackle. The multi-parameter displays percents, but the high pass filter frequency should be in hertz, right? Easy. Click on the multi-parameter to get the editor displayed, and the thing we're looking for is the value mode, which is percents by default. There are quite a few modes in there, but what we usually want is called by first parameter. Voila, the multi-parameter now displays the frequency value. Right below the value mode, there are other important settings, the default value and origin. Default value is what the multi-parameter will set if you right click on it. Let's just say I want the default to be 200 Hertz. I have two options. First, change the default directly in the editor, most likely via text editor to get a nice number. So I double click on the default and enter 200, done. Or I can set the multi-parameter value in the plugin itself, possibly using text edit again, and then click the set current value button. Origin is where the highlight of the multi-parameter control starts. Let me set it to 100 Hertz just for demonstration purposes. The effect is visible on the multi-parameter control too. But let's have a glimpse of what will be possible. Enter some multi-parameter name, and then click the edit button to get to the easy screen. There is a knob, our knob, the multi-parameter. Let me move it a bit. The highlight ring of the knob always starts at 100 Hertz. That's the origin. Doesn't make much sense here, but just look at the input knob in the plugin itself. It has origin at zero decibels and it makes perfect sense. Setting up multi-parameters origin is similar to setting up the default value. There's just one more button to set it to center value since that is often useful. Speed makes the multi-parameter go slower and sort of follow the value. Let me set it to one second and move the multi-parameter value to see what it does. Great to smoothen things up if zipper noise occurs, for example, and in a way simulate the behavior of analog equipment where no change is infinitely fast as it is in the digital world. Speaking of analog, remember the consoles where instead of high pass knob, there was a switch? It turns out that for humans, it's usually easier to choose from a limited number of values since the differences are easier to spot. And that's why multi-parameters provide the steps feature. Let me set it to five and move the multi-parameter. I can still move it to any value, but the units only jump between the five states and so does the high pass filter frequency. Why have a slider or knob for that then? Don't worry. We'll get there when talking about the user interfaces. So far, we've only been using the normal multi-parameter mode. It's time to check the other modes. Switch mode changes the multi-parameter control to a button with two states, on and off. It simply switches between the minimum and maximum values. So perhaps you want an optional high pass filter switch with some predefined frequency. More often, it is used to enable various features, for example, but there's another perk, the switch time. Let me set it to one second and click the button a few times. The associated parameters are sort of following my clicking. Great for various creative features. The trigger mode is similar, but the button is not a switch. You click it and the associated parameters go up and down. Not so useful for mixing probably, but handy for creative stuff. There's one special thing about the trigger mode though. 
the randomizer option in the title. If you enable it, whenever the button is clicked, the plugin will produce random values for each of the associated parameters within the allowed range, and it even counts the transformation shape in. Great for building custom randomizers for a set of parameters. So far, the multi-parameter was controlling the associated parameters in sort of a linear fashion. You move it up and the parameters go up or down, and vice versa. There is a transformation shape, but that would often be too complicated to use for what we're about to do. Banks mode is more complex. Let's have a motivation example. Open M-Wave Shaper MB and select Preset 1, Band. Sort of empty basic settings. Let me create some shape by adding three points. Next, learn positions of all of these points to multi-parameter one. Now, if I move the multi-parameter value, these points will move, but they will move all in the same way. What if I want them to move individually and create sort of multiple graph presets? Open the multi-parameter editor and switch the mode to banks. The view next to the parameters will change quite a bit. The number of banks is on top, and it defines the number of the banks, or snapshots if you'd like, values for each parameter. I'll set this to 5. Below are the actual banks numbered from left to right from 1 to 5. Each column has a few buttons useful for editing and the actual values for each parameter. Select a parameter to highlight its row of values for each bank. All I need to do now is define all banks. I could use the banks mode editor directly, but that's not too convenient. So first I'll move the points of the wave shaper graph and click the save button for bank one. This saves the current positions into the first bank. Then move the points again and do the same thing for bank two and so on for all the banks. Now move the multi-parameter value. It is interpolating between the shapes I created. This can be used in any of the plugins and any set of parameters. Cool, huh? Notice the highlights on the banks showing which banks are being used. What else is in the banks editor? You already know the save button. Load button selects the bank by setting the multi-parameter value to the exact spot where the bank is selected. Dice button creates random settings using the smart randomizer. To create completely random settings, hold Alt. And to change the existing settings just a little bit, hold Control. Menu button provides further options. Currently, this only lets you reorder the banks. By the way, there are some features hidden in the menu button next to the number of banks as well. Finally, the name. There are two of them, but only the first set is really important. The other is just a shorter version used when the multi-parameter editor is chosen to be a set of checkboxes, not relevant for now. The name lets you name each bank so that it can be displayed in the multi-parameter editor as value. Let me name the banks A, B, C, D, and E. And nothing has changed. That brings us back to the value mode. There are several modes regarding the bank names. First is by bank name. And as you can see, it simply displays the name of the bank closest to the current value. Buy bank names with percents mode displays both banks between which the plugin is interpolating, including percents. Buy bank name interpolated expects the beginning of the bank names to be numbers, so let me rename the banks 1 Hertz, 
2 hertz, 4 hertz, 8 hertz, and 16 hertz. The plugin now produces values such as 1.34 hertz. Great for any custom units. Bybank name interpolated log is the same, but it uses a logarithmic scale. Useful for when you have frequency units, for example, just like our hertz case, which are usually using logarithmic scale. Typical for equalizer filter frequencies, for instance. Finally, bybank number ignores the name and uses bank numbers instead. Now you can make pretty much any units you'd like. Next is the cyclic mode. In a way, this creates one more bank at the end, which is a clone of the first bank. What is that for? Imagine you'd want a modulator to go through our wave shaper banks, then jump to the beginning and again and again. In other words, cycle through the banks. Let me show you. I enable the cyclic mode, attach a modulator to the multi-parameter. That works the exact same way as learning the multi-parameter itself. Now, I set the modulator shape to saw wave. Invert it using the parameter invert switch. And I need to click the advanced button in shape editor and disable the interpolate between one and zero option to avoid some strange effects. Done. Let's check it out without the cyclic mode. There's a distinct jump after the last bank now. Rare, but useful. The last option is the interpolate values. Let me uncheck it for one parameter. It may not be clear enough in our fast modulation, but that point is jumping. Let me make it more obvious by clicking the set interpolate to all parameters button, which will set the same option to all associated parameters. No interpolation anymore, all points are jumping. It doesn't seem too useful in our scenario, but it will be quite handy once you start building your own user interfaces. We are done with the powerful banks mode, but there's one more, bit of an obscure one, meter mode. This mode has been designed for implementing meters on the easy screen, but in theory it can be used for other stuff as well. So far, multi-parameters were changing other parameters. Meter mode makes them work the other way around, change their own values according to the first associated parameter. Let me just select it and now move the first point in the wave shaper. See how the multi-parameter value is changing? The multi-parameter is no longer changing other parameters, but it's visualizing the position of the first point. Next time, we'll be making some easy screen user interfaces, finally.